This is the Louis T Network. Then it gets even better when your team makes the playoffs. In the lab. Hey yo. Who else could it be? But me, your me. Louis T, welcome. You are in the lab room. Of course, I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. Super Bowl 50 is in the books. We have a victor. Congratulations to the 2015-2016 Denver Broncos. You, my friends, are the Super Bowl champions of 2015 and I'd love to tell you that I'm surprised but I'm not and um, I'm not gonna make this about me right now of course <laughs> I will eventually but let's talk about this football game and uh, I thought it was a really good football game was it well played no it was a lot of turnovers the, the field was sloppy I said that on my halftime video and it, I want to I apologize YouTube screwed me over so I do the halftime video, I go to upload it, and I guess everybody and their mama was trying to get the video up at halftime of the Super Bowl because they, I had a three minute video and they told me it was gonna take two hours and 27 minutes to get it up. I said, the hell with it. And I just let it upload by itself and it ended up finishing right around midway point of the fourth quarter, whatever. Anyway, um, I talked about the field conditions. It was porous and, and I expected that. They gotta do something about Levi Stadium, okay? What does it feel? Two years old, a year old, and we're having issues with it. I think it's two years old. They gotta fix that, man. It, it, it's out of control now. Guys are slipping all over. But there was one play. Demarcus Ware goes to bull rush Michael Orr, and literally, I've never seen this before in my life. Michael Orr, his feet did not move. He literally was pushed back. And it was like he was on skates. Like he was on ice. He literally didn't move his feet. He was pushed backwards and his feet skid across the field. That's how sloppy these this field conditions or these field conditions were in this football game. It was ridiculous, but that being said, elite defenses get it done when it's all said and done in the Super Bowl. And, and I tried to explain that to everybody. I tried to convey that message to everybody that, look, the Panthers are a good football team. And I want to congratulate the 2015-2016 Carolina Panthers. Who saw them having the season in the run that they had this year. The question that I ask now is, was that a run or is, is this team here to stay? I think I know the answer to that. I think you know the answer to that at home, but uh, it was a hell of a season, remarkable season. It's a shame that it had to end the way that it did, but uh, let's just be frank here. They hadn't seen a defense all season, the likes of which they were gonna see in this game. And I tried to explain that to everyone at home. This is what I do, folks, I watch football all day long, 24 seven, 360, I'm not, okay. I don't watch it every day of the year, but uh, every day of football season, I watch football, that's what I do. And I, I kept trying to explain to people that, and when I made the video earlier in the season, could the Broncos be the greatest defense of all time? And, oh yeah, I was a little ahead of, my, ahead of myself, but they were on a pace at that time to shatter some records and you see what they, they have and what they bring to the table. Yeah, there's some vulnerabilities there, but look, at the end of the day, they got it all. The defensive line is stacked. The linebackers can get pressure on the quarterback. The second, the secondary, top notch. Safety play, outstanding. Corners for days. They can do everything that you need to do to stop a top flight offense like the Carolina Panthers, and that's what they did. We've seen dominant defenses come into the Super Bowl and dominate before. Uh, 2000 Ravens dominated the Giants in an easy blowout victory. 2002 Buccaneers. They got, they had the cheat code. They had the test before it was given because they took John Gruden who installed that Raiders offense and they had him on their sideline. So they had all the answers to the test before they got it. They went out and executed, beat the Raiders down in that football game and solidified themselves as one of the best defenses of all time. And then the 13 Seattle Seahawks, we know about the demolition of the Broncos just two years ago in Super Bowl 48. We saw it again in this game. Defenses win championships. I can't stress that enough. If you find an elite defense and you put them up against a good offense like this Panthers offense is, just it's not going to be enough, especially when it's just one man. You're asking Cam Newton to be 
Superman, literally, MVP Cam Newton. You needed him to be MVP Cam Newton, and he couldn't be because the offensive line wasn't protecting him. And I told you that that offensive line, while it was solid, you know, I'm, I'm gonna beat Dave Gettleman's ass up. Okay, every opportunity I get, I'm gonna beat Dave Gettleman up, but that's not the time nor the place for that right now. But the offensive line, again, when you put pure pass rushes, and I told you the key to the game is gonna be establishing a run. And it's sickening me to watch Jonathan Stewart get hurt on like the second possession of the game. Um, Derek Wolf grabs his ankle, he overextends himself, then jumps backwards. I can't explain why. You know, my mom, my dad and my sister tried to explain why he did it. I, I can't rationalize that. I, I just, why are you jumping backwards when the guy's got your an an ankle at a, a weird angle? So he, he twists his ankle all up and he wasn't the same after that. I don't really know if it would have made a difference, to be honest with you. Then you got the two fumbles by the fire hydrant, uh, the Tolbert, and uh, you, so you really didn't establish the run the way you wanted to in the game. Fozzie Whitaker had one nice run, but you knew you weren't going to get a lot out of the running game and if you couldn't do the read option stuff and they weren't having it and I told you this is as disciplined a defense in Denver with Wade Phillips at the helm is as di disciplined a defense as you're going to find in the National Football League they don't fall for the fakes they're very disciplined they have good gap discipline and, and assignment football is what they play snap in snap out uh, they don't rush willy-nilly and give you gaping holes Cam had one run where they broke down in containment, they went up the field, opened up an avenue, they blitzed, and Cam was able to find a seam and pick up about 11 yards and slid for a first down. Other than that, he had a run where he broke contain to the outside, and then uh, the tight end, he released late, and that forced the linebacker to run with the tight end, or else Cam would have thrown him the football, and there was nothing but green grass and opportunity had he done that, so he had to run with the tight end. Cam runs, once he passed the line of scrimmage, uh, Brandon, um, uh, Marshall, the linebacker, cleaned him up, tackled him out of bounds. And so, uh, look, there weren't a lot of lanes for Cam to run. And I told you, Cam is not Russell Wilson in the pocket. It's as simple as this. He's not going to have time if you can't run the football and make it third and manageable, which they couldn't all game long. And so he had to throw from the pocket. I told you, Cam is not a polished pocket passer yet. That's not something that he excels at. And because there was so much the rest throughout this game, he wasn't comfortable. There were throws there that Cam has made all season long in his sleep, but because of the pressure, he, he rushed, his footwork wasn't good, ball sailed on him in this game, he missed a bunch of receivers that were running free. I, I even thought I saw Ted Ginn open a couple of times down the field where Cam panicked, got rid of the football to him underneath a uh, route, and didn't give uh, routes down the field a chance to um, kind of formulate so he can throw the football down the field. But again, that's what pressure does. It speeds up that internal clock. And so uh, Broncos give them credit where it's due. They stopped the run game, suffocated that, forced the Panthers to do something that they really didn't want to do, and that was beat them through the air. And that's what I said the key to the game is going to be. Stop the run game, stop rushing Cam Newton, and make passing Cam Newton. Beat you, he couldn't do that. Offensive line didn't hold up. Defense, I thought the Panthers' defense was phenomenal in this game. Coney Ealy, man. You get a golf clap, my man. Three sacks for Coney Ealy. Couple of forced fumbles. He was off. And an interception. Had the Panthers won the Super Bowl, he would have been your MVP. That guy was everywhere in this football game. So let's give Coney Ealy a little bit of love. And I thought the Panthers defensively, they did what they were supposed to do. They shut down an inferior Broncos offensive attack. Really didn't give up much of anything defensively. They didn't even give up a touchdown. If you want to charge that late touchdown at the end of the game to them, go ahead, man. But I won't let you charge that to their account. I'm not going to let you do that. You can charge it to their account if you want. But that's fraudulent charges, okay? That was a Von Miller strip sack force fumble and a recovery by T.J. Ward down inside the five-yard line that set that up. I'm not giving that to the defense. There's only so many times you can ask that defense to bail you out before they finally say, you know what, to hell with it. I'm done. And so uh, that, that they reached their limit at that point of the game. But there were so many opportunities in the first half of the Panthers. Let's run through this game quickly. I don't want to keep you here longer than I need to. I've already said most of what I wanted to say anyway. But th there were so many mistakes in that first half. I thought the Broncos did what I thought they were going to do that first drive. I said, your best opportunity to get a good defense is on the first drive. You plan for them. You game plan. You put in the first 15. You scripted it. So you know what you want to do. You, you expect certain looks. If you get them, you hit them. Boom. They did that on that first drive. They moved it down the field. But as 
My dad said they were going to stall out. They did. They had to settle for a field goal. I said, look, it doesn't matter. Get points. I don't care if it's field goals. Get points. And they did. They got a field goal in that possession. Panthers, you can see it was going to be a long day. That first possession, Cam comes out, and they are all over him. They sack him. Uh, they pressure him. And they had to punt the football three and out. I think he threw an underneath route. They weren't able to pick it up, and they had to punt. And so uh, you saw where this was going to go. Uh, you, you knew the Denver defense was going to be there all night long, and they were. And so uh, it was a slow developing first half. Not a lot of action in terms of offensive firepower and, and fireworks, but Von Miller getting around the edge early in the game, forcing the football out, scooped up in the end zone by Malik Jackson for a touchdown to give the Broncos a 10 to nothing lead. I said, they needed to come out and be the aggressors. They needed to, one of the storm is what I said. I, I really didn't think they were gonna come out and score 10 unanswered points early. I thought they just needed to come out and that first drive to me was all I needed to see was get the field goal, get the momentum, kind of really put the Panthers back on their heels a bit and by them getting the field goal, then forcing the three and out, I said, great, okay? Now you feel good about what you've been able to do because Panthers won the toss and they deferred, thinking we're gonna come out, we're gonna set a defensive presence in this game early, force them to punt, get the offense on the field and try to really start this thing up like we've done in, in the NFC playoffs leading up to the Super Bowl, but it wasn't, wasn't able to do that in this game. And so uh, I, I thought the Tolbert fumble early, you know, kind of set the tone in, in terms of mistakes you had the Jericho Cotri bobble. It looked like a catch to me. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. To be honest, I thought that was a catch, but I said they, they've done this all season long. They stuck with the call on the field that, and they've been pretty consistent in doing that, and they did that there. Gotta catch the football. I thought the Panthers came out with a lot of nervous energy. You could see it. I mean, a lot of guys making mistakes. Six false start penalties and pre-snap penalties for the Panthers. A team that's pretty disciplined, doesn't make a lot of mistakes, doesn't beat themselves, but they beat themselves in this football game. Six pre-snap penalties in this game, four turnovers, seven sacks surrendered. Campbell was hit a bunch of other times. They treated him like they treated Tom Brady, and a lot of people didn't think they would be able to do that. And I, I just, again, elite pass rushers do this to you, and I couldn't understand why people couldn't wrap their brain around the idea that the Broncos were going to be able to stop the run first and foremost, because they've done it all season long, and then second of all, after they stopped the run on first and second down, forced the Panthers into third and long, which I told the Panthers to stay out of, they were going to be able to pin their ears back, go after Cam Newton, and force the issue. And that's what they did all game long. And so that's what they did early in the football game. Panthers were able to respond, though, moving down the field. They were able to get in the end zone, unlike the Broncos offensively. And so it's 10 to 7, and you're thinking, okay, yeah, they, they pretty much have, you know, settled down. They're getting into a rhythm, and I actually was upset at Ron Rivera because he challenged the Cotri play, he lost. I didn't want him to waste his second challenge that early in the game on that Peyton Manning, Coley Ely sack. Uh, it was for seven yards. I understand Panthers have just scored a touchdown, got the momentum, they're deep in their own territory. It, it set up second and 17, so you're thinking to yourself, if they don't pick up this first down, they got to punt from their own end zone. You're going to get great field position if you go down and score again. So I get the logic, I just wasn't... Was seven yards worth your last challenge of the game four minutes into the second quarter? I don't think so. I just, I don't buy that, but I get it. Again, if they get that stop, which they ended up getting, they pump the football, and Panthers get great field position, end up getting a touchdown, and they win the football game going away, that could have been a turning point in the game. So could that a key to the uh, personal foul penalty that get, or uh, um, taunting, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the sidelines, when he was talking trash, they were up 10 to nothing. They were about to get the football back, probably gonna get some solid field position, and he <laughs> he lost his top, and we know he can be a head case at times, and there, there were a number of penalties. Trey Boston had his own little issues, a couple of personal foul penalties for him, legal block, a blindside block on a, on a punt, and uh, he had another one on a taunting with the uh, uh, Emmanuel Sanders, E-Man Sanders, catch the football, and I, that, I blame that on uh, Dr. Salt and Pepper, uh, Roman Harper, he sets that presence. He's one of those guys who can't stand when other guys like to showboat. He always wants to do something about it. Man, go sit your ass down somewhere. So he always upsets me and it rubbed off on Trey Boss. You know, he's a young, impressionable safety. He tried to do the same thing. They didn't give him the same uh, respect they gave to Salt and Pepper. They gave him a 15 yard penalty and told him to get off the field on the sideline. So I, I thought that the, the Panthers were out of their character. And I, I told him, be who you've been all season long. And I thought the play that, to me, exemplified them trying to be something that they're not was the double pass that they were going to try to ex execute, where they threw it to Ted Ginn. And you can see this one was 
a mile away that it was a double pass. Ted Ginn was behind the line of scrimmage. He was going to throw it back to Cam, but again, one of the most disciplined defenses you will see in your life, this Denver Broncos defense. They send a lineman out there. They hadn't seen this play from the Panthers all season long. Didn't matter. They knew something was fishy. The defensive lineman goes over there with Cam. Ted Ginn Jr. should have thrown the football out of bounds. I'm pretty sure if they practiced this, they told him, if it's not there, throw it out of bounds. He runs five yards out of bounds and loses five yards on the play. And they ultimately had to punt the football. Again, bad football and to me the Panthers going out of character and doing things that they're not accustomed to doing and I told them be who they were in this game and you could see them kind of going away from what they had done all season long. You get a 15 yard penalty uh, on one of your offensive linemen for pushing a guy in the back which was just a, a really dumb play on a possession where Grampano ends up missing a field goal in the second half that would have cut the lead to 13 to 10. And so, again, just too many mistakes on the part of the Panthers in this football game. And then, and I said this in the video, I said, look, don't allow this game to be close late because if it is, I trust the Broncos defense to shut it down. What did I tell you? When they need a stop late in the ball game, they always get the stop. Did I not tell you that? And when the game was in the balance, 16 to 10, Panthers with the football, about three minutes left on the clock, if they're gonna have any opportunity to win this game, now is the time. Von Miller beats the tackle around the corner, knocks the football out of Cam Newton's hand, who I thought did a really poor job of stepping up in the pocket in this game. So did Peyton man. And both of these guys I thought struggled stepping up in the pocket in this game, getting the ball knocked out of their hands several times in this football game. And that proved to be the difference as it was recovered by uh, T.J. Ward setting up the Broncos touchdown and I thought C.J. Anderson had a magnificent game about 20 uh, or so carries for over 80 yards. We're talking about 40 yards a carry against a very stingy Panthers defense on the ground but again like I said this Panthers defense is good. It's not elite. People really were getting upset at me for saying that. I'm just a professional football watcher. That's all I am folks. I just tell it like it is. I don't have any bias. And like I told you before, I didn't have a dog in this fight. I just like being right. And that's why I say the things that I say because I watch football. And I went 10 and 1 in this postseason. Can you believe that my lone loss was my goddamn Redskins? My own team sabotaged me. Or well, I would have been perfect this postseason. Because I wasn't going to pick them to beat Arizona. I would have been 11 and 0. Oh, I've never done that and I still haven't because of my damn dirty Redskins. But. When it's all said and done, Von Miller, your MVP, wreaked havoc in this game. Two and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, a beautiful knockaway of the football. Jericho Cotri had it in his hands down the sidelines. Von Miller knocks it out of his hands down the sidelines, close to the end zone. I just thought he was phenomenal. He was everywhere. He even spied on Cam a couple of times. Von Miller, I, I had a, a buddy of mine ask me, if I could pick one defensive player, who would it be? I told him Von Miller without hesitation, and you saw why in this football game. The man is a beast, he's a menace. And the last time these two teams played each other down at, uh, in Carolina, Von Miller was all over Cam Newton, permanently attached to his hip. Same thing happened in this game. Demarcus Ware got in on the fun. Good to see him get a ring. And uh, Peyton Manning goes out on top, didn't have to do much. And he really didn't have that great of a ball game. But again, when you have elite defenses, they can carry the game and they did that in this game. Give some credit where credit is due. The Denver Broncos are an elite defense and they have just put themselves up there with the best of all time in terms of defenses with this performance. Set a Super Bowl record with seven sacks, forced four turnovers and a bunch of other miscues. Panthers, they, they just mentally weren't sharp in this game. No fair catch by the Broncos return man. And two guys had a shot to clean his clock. They both thought he called for a fair catch. Let him run 61 yards setting up a Broncos field goal. Again, a lot of mistakes made by this Panthers team on this night. They were not the better team in this football game as they go down 24 to 10 in this game. Josh Norman crying on the sideline. He had two opportunities for all the mouth to get out of Josh Norman. He's a phenomenal football player. For all of the lip, he had two opportunities to change this game. An early opportunity to pick Peyton Manning off. And to me, the one that really hurt, the one late on a third down, third and like nine, late in the ball game. They, I, don't, I couldn't understand why Peyton Manning is even challenging Josh Norman at this point in the game. 
E Man Sand had been eating and eating good, and he still decided. And I actually saw Owen Daniels open against the safety on that particular play. He decides to try the one guy you don't try on that Panthers uh, secondary, and he almost paid for it. He should have paid for it. Norman dropped the football yet again, and that would have changed the game because if he picks that off, they're deep in Denver Broncos territory. You're going to win the football game. At that point, it was 16 to 10. You get that pick, give the offense that kind of field position, you're going to win this football game. 17, 16, something along those lines. Instead, he dropped the football and the rest is history. So I saw him crying on the sideline. Get your ass up, get in the locker room. And if you want to break down, you break down then. Not on the sideline, not after you had the Lucha Libre mask on, not after you've been chumming it up all week, not after you had a comment for every single person you could find. You want to cry on the sideline, take that in the locker room, my man. Don't do that on the sidelines when you know the cameras are watching. And so uh, it was a tough, bitter pill to, pill to swallow. For you Panthers fans out there, man, hell of a season. You have nothing to be ashamed of. And I think your boys are going to be back. I mean, it was a hell of a run. And I think this is the start of something big for these Panthers. You just know how hard it is to get here. And that's why I said, I've seen this movie before. I already know the ending. Let's see if the Panthers can change the narrative and get back to the Super Bowl and this time win it. And, and, and uh, it's going to be a different season. You get KB back, and I think that's going to change the dynamic of your offense, and maybe not for the best. We'll see. A lot of things to talk about. Let the Broncos celebrate! For the Super Bowl season, and you deserve it. Great defensive effort. They carried the day. They got it done like they had all season long. Denver Broncos win the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 50, 24, 10. I am your man, Louis T. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab. We'll come back and join me as I continue to break down anything. And that's the National Football League. So that puts a cap on the 2015-2016 season. We are now officially in the offseason. I'll let it breathe for a couple of days, and then we're going to jump right into the 2016 NFL Draft Prospects 101 series. Until then, I'm your man, Louis T, signing off. I was right like I usually am, and I tell you this all the time, there's nothing better than being right. There are a few things in life better than being right, and that I was, and look, I'm a professional football watcher. It's what I do. Just remember this, I am on a whole nother level. So next time you wanna go against me, do me a favor, don't. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room, or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Gets even better when your team makes the playoffs.